I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into blends. Uh, so I've done a previous module on the blend tool right there. Uh, but I want to go a in just in a little bit more detail with that uh, and show you a few more things that you can do with it. So let's say I decided to start with the pencil tool. Make a few curves. I'll just uh, willy-nilly make them. Something like that, let's say. And then I'm going to go in with my pencil tool and go ahead and, I mean my smooth tool, make sure these are smooth curves. Do that with all of these. I'm going to have, you know, as few points as I can. It's usually a, go a good goal to have when you're working in Illustrator is to make as few points as possible. Just makes your files lighter, uh, makes things work a little bit more smoothly. Uh, with each of these, I'm going to go ahead and choose a different stroke color. So I'm going to make sure I have my stroke selected as the color choice, and I'm just going to randomly pick uh, colors for these. Orange, okay? Now I've got two oranges. Let's make that one lime green. I've got two greens. Let's make it blue. Okay, that'll work. So to create uh, some interesting patterns and blends, uh, you've seen like the, the backgrounds on the Mac, I think, that especially when OS X first came out, the backgrounds had these sort of uh, stylized, abstract shapes back there. And those were created with something like the Blend tool. Uh, the way the Blend tool works is you can simply click on an object and click on the next object and then click on the next object and it's going to do its best to blend from one of those objects to the next. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. You can also be really specific and actually click on points to start with. So I can start from this point and you notice how it changes black to that point. That's going to make it go directly from that point to that point. If I start here and go down to this point, it's going to flip that You notice how that flips in space. Uh, so by depending on which point you click on first, you can actually change uh, what the blend tool is going to do. If I click from this one to this one, and then from here to here. So I can so this compared to the first version I made is quite different, uh, and I can really have a lot of control over how those blends are created. And again, after you've created that blend, double-clicking on this, right now it's doing smooth color. We could say specified steps um, and do 50. And that's going to do 50 steps between each of those. Okay. And do keep in mind that you still have the op option to come in here and make this a curve. So this is the blending path uh, to smooth that out and actually manipulate the direction that it's making its blend, you can use that path uh, to do that. And then you can edit this path at any time. I could bring this path way down here if I wanted to. I could space out all of these curves um, and really smooth out that blend so that it's a really nice, smooth, even shape. So it's a, it's a really versatile tool that allows you to do quite a lot of things. Uh, and I encourage you to really get in here and um, play with it. So that's giving me something that's a little bit more interesting to me. I can always come back in, double click. I can change the way it's doing its blend from uh, this orientation to more of a bent orientation. So it's using the lines and, and bending them around the direction of the path that I've created, not just blending them from the starting shape, from one shape to another. You can also go specify distance. And right now that's 50. You can see that's taking out, uh, it's setting at four points. So let's say we wanted it at 10 points. 
It's going to add a little more space between it. Uh, let's do 100 points. Okay. So that's getting a little bit closer to what we had before. Uh, you can still come back and edit any of these paths by clicking on them. And so I could click on this path and modify the path itself. itself. And that will change uh, the action of the blend. So I can get some nice little creases in there if I wanted to do that. By adding strange curves in, elongating those, you start to get some interesting pattern built into your uh, splines that you're using. Um, so you can really create some nice backgrounds and some nice effects with that. And of course these shapes are still uh, individual shapes. So I can click on this green one. If I decided I wanted that to be a light blue instead, I still have the opportunity to come in and change that. If I wanted this to be red or orange or purple, I still have the opportunity to change that. So blend tools can be very, very versatile. And this works with shapes, it works with whatever image that you're trying, or whatever um, art that you're trying to blend together. Okay, so just a little bit more about uh, using the blend tool to create interesting patterns and uh, to manipulate the way that it's blending shapes together.